This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Rinkitink in Oz by L. Frank Baum. Chapter 11 Zella Goes to Carigos. The forest in which Nicobob lived with his wife and daughter stood between the mountains and the city of Regos, and a well-beaten path wound among the trees leading from the city to the mines. This path was used by the king's messengers, and captured prisoners were also sent by this way from Regos to work in the underground caverns. Nicobob had built his cabin more than a mile away from this path, that he might not be molested by the wild and lawless soldiers of King Gos. But the family of the charcoal burner was surrounded by many creatures scarcely less dangerous to encounter, and often in the night they could hear savage animals growling and prowling about the cabin. Because Nicobob minded his own business and never hunted the wild creatures to injure them, the beasts had come to regard him as one of the natural dwellers in the forest and did not molest him or his family. Still, Zella and her mother seldom wandered far from home, except on such errands as carrying honey to Carigos, and at these times Nicobob cautioned them to be very careful. So when Zella set out on her journey to Queen Cor, with the two pails of honey in her hands, she was undertaking a dangerous adventure, and there was no certainty that she would return safely to her loving parents. But they were poor, and Queen Cor's money, which they expected to receive for the honey, would enable them to purchase many things that were needed so it was deemed best that zella should go she was a brave little girl and poor people are often obliged to take chances that rich ones are spared a passing woodchopper had brought news to nicobob's cabin that queen cor had made a prisoner of the conquering prince of pingaree and that ghosts and his warriors were again back in their city of regos but these struggles and conquests were matters which, however interesting, did not concern the poor charcoal burner or his family. They were more anxious over the report that the warriors had become more reckless than ever before, and delighted in annoying all the common people. So Zella was told to keep away from the beaten path as much as possible, that she might not encounter any of the king's soldiers. When it is necessary to choose between the warriors and the wild beasts, said Nicobob, the beast will be found the more merciful. The little girl had put on her best attire for the journey, and her mother threw a blue silk shawl over her head and shoulders. Upon her feet were the pretty red shoes her father had brought her from Regos. Thus prepared, she kissed her parents goodbye, and started out with a light heart, carrying the pails of honey in either hand. It was necessary for Zella to cross the path that led from the mines to the city, but once on the other side she was not likely to meet with any one, for she had resolved to cut through the forest and so reach the bridge of boats without entering the city of Regos, where she might be interrupted. For an hour or two she found the walking easy enough, but then the forest, which in this part was unknown to her, became badly tangled. The trees were thicker and creeping vines intertwined between them. She had to turn this way and that to get through it all, and finally she came to a place where a network of vines and branches effectually barred her further progress. Zella was dismayed at first when she encountered this obstacle, but setting down her pails she made an endeavor to push the branches aside. At her touch they parted as if by magic, breaking asunder like dried twigs, and she found she could pass freely. At another place a great log had fallen across her way, but the little girl lifted it easily and cast it aside, although six ordinary men could scarcely have moved it. The child was somewhat worried at this evidence of a strength she had heretofore been ignorant that she possessed. In order to satisfy herself that it was no delusion, she tested her newfound power in many ways, finding that nothing was too big nor too heavy for her to lift. And, naturally enough, the girl gained courage from these experiments, and became confident that she could protect herself in any emergency. When, presently, a wild boar ran toward her, grunting horribly and threatening her with its great tusks, she did not climb a tree to escape, as she had always done before on meeting such creatures, but stood still and faced the boar. When it had come quite close, and Zella saw that it could not injure her, 
a fact that astonished both the beast and the girl, she suddenly reached down and, seizing it by one ear, threw the great beast far off amongst the trees, where it fell headlong to the earth, grunting louder than ever with surprise and fear. The girl laughed merrily at this incident, and picking up her pails resumed her journey through the forest. It is not recorded whether the wild boar told his adventure to the other beasts, or they had happened to witness his defeat, but certain it is that Zella was not again molested. A brown bear watched her pass without making any movement in her direction, and a great puma, a beast much dreaded by all men, crept out of her path as she approached, and disappeared among the trees. Thus everything favored the girl's journey, and she made such good speed that by noon she emerged from the forest's edge, and found she was quite near to the bridge of boats that led to Carigos. This she crossed safely, and without meeting any of the rude warriors she so greatly feared, and five minutes later the daughter of the charcoal burner was seeking admittance at the back door of Queen Cor's palace. End of chapter 11